You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for December 22nd, 2017. It's not safe for work. We now join the Professional Left Podcast monthly team strategy session already in progress. Blue Gal, would you like to say a few words? I appreciate it, Drift Glass. As I told you last night, shortly after the Senate vote, I know I speak on behalf of the entire podcast and millions of Americans. When I say congratulations and thank you, thank you for seeing through the course of this year our podcast. You've been rebuilding our military, putting the safety and security of the American people first. You've restored American credibility on the world stage, Drift Glass. Allies, we're step- standing up to our enemies, but you promised economic renewal at home. You said we could make this economy great again, and you promised to roll back regulations, and you signed more bills rolling back federal red tape than any podcaster in American history. Would you like to say a few words, Drift Glass? Thank you, Blue Gal, I would. I know I speak on behalf of the entire podcast and millions of Americans when I say congratulations and thank you. You've unleashed American energy. You've spurred an optimism in this country that setting records. But you promised the American people in that campaign a year ago that you would deliver a middle-class miracle. And in the last short period of time, that promise will be fulfilled. And I just, I'm deeply humbled as your husband to be able to be here. But mostly, Blue Gal, I'll end where I began and just tell you, I want to thank you, Blue Gal. I want to thank you for speaking on behalf of and fighting every day for forgotten men and women in America because of your determination, because of your leadership. The first Forgotten men and women of America are forgotten no more. And we are making America great again. I know our podcast listeners can't see this, but my arms are folded very tightly. (laughs) Thank you. That was very nice. That was very nice. (laughs) Next. (laughs) By the way, this is how we talk at home all the time, (laughs) which is why our children have left the state. (laughs) Yes, that's why the children have left the state to get away from all of that. For future generations, this has been a dramatic reenactment of the cabinet meeting <laughs> held by uh, President Stupid, also known as Il Duche, just also known the as Mike a, Pence part. Just the Pence part. <laughs> we, we couldn't do the, do the rest thing. of it because we would have gone into some sort of massive sugar overload shock and well, passed I out. I tried to paste into our podcast notes the Ben Carson prayer, and I just couldn't do it. I well, because it's gibberish. I thought Bible. No, it was it was actually sacrilegious and yeah. full of lies yeah uh he he actually um prayed for jesus to end the corrosive debt <laughs> right after they passed a 1.5 trillion dollar deficit budget buster yeah so um oh so, sweet yeah. baby jesus in your red white and blue manger <laughs> with the american flag holding a, a golden m16 delivered oh, to you golly, by the wise golly, man golly. hey won't hey, you please make class. the debt go away yes beautiful how <laughs> you, you doing just tell people what 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 they're listening to here that it's You're the professional the per- left <laughs> You are listening to this is I, I this is the part where Orson Welles breaks in and tells people no they're not actually aliens at Grover's Mill don't panic people it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal get out of the streets and tunnels to get the gun away from your no your your family is fine everything's fine this is the professional left with oh Drift Glass and Blue God. Gal and welcome to our annual retrospective of The Walking Dead what a year it was anyway the other thing I want to say on behalf of Middle Child. Um, this is episode 420, so blaze it. I'm one toke over the line, sweet Jesus, one toke over the line. Middle child has her phone ring her at 418 every day it so it. that she can do blaze it to everyone in her world. It, she thinks it's hilarious. I'm sure that in the history of high schools around the country, being on student council meant you got the good pot. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say I served on student council. Oh, did you? Well, that, see, there you go. <laughs> and student court. I was a debater. Yeah, it wasn't quite uh, the Congress. same. Yeah, it wasn't and quite And I know the same. exactly where to look in an adolescent's room to find the pot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know right where to look. And also, just so you know, I mean, middle child, oh, all my children, uh, you know, I, my, my, my son is off at college and he has now shared with me that he and his roommate barfed together. They um, did. <laughs> They over they overindulged. And they they overindulged and barfed together, yeah. you know. So they've they've had that freshman experience. 
middle child who makes these blaze it jokes and then is terribly shocked that we would pretend to go look for drugs in her room because she's on student council. She's the one who said who claims that I raised my children with no rules. Yes, I know. The the fish does not recognize the water, the water in which, in which it swim. she swims. Exactly. No, There's such a there is such a standard for giving back to the community, number one. Yeah. Uh, making sure you're responsible for your actions, making sure that you're uh, true to your uh, moral compass. I mean, all of that. It, I raise people the way I talk to you guys out there in podcast yeah. land. And but I, she doesn't I, I, recognize that as it's not it's not put to her like chores, rules, respect your elders, that sort of thing. It's very communicated in a very different way. There, anyway. There's a secret meeting of the uh, uh, immigration subversive rights group that I'm <laughs> yeah. a part of. Yes. I'm, I try to be a part of a lot of these things. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to be wired into as much as I can be. And her first reaction was, can I come? Exactly. Can I come? I want to be part of welcoming cities and all of that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. Well, we want to get into the podcast and uh, <laughs> yeah. start, start Drift Glass, please. Uh, yes. Could we start with Casey Hunt's tweet? Oh, please. She really did. She stepped right out. She stepped right out today, this evening. And thank you to the, uh, it was Rod, Rod Green on Twitter, yeah. who brought this to my attention. And then I brought it to your attention. And you went, oh my and goodness. Oh my God. <laughs> She's at Casey. Uh, blue, check. Here, a blue check. Blue check mark. Uh, and she tweeted, Moments where both sides in Congress blame the other for a basic failure to execute constitutional responsibilities to all Americans are part of why trust levels in Congress are so low. So very low. So low. Uh, so, yeah, she, number one, she did the both sides right out of the gate. Yep. And then uh, she said Congress instead of Republican Congress. Yes. And right now she has 444 responses to that yeah. tweet. It has spread through Twitter like a fire. And I just, I picture, yeah. I picture um, somewhere uh, Chuck Todd sitting on a throne like Emperor Palpatine <laughs> going, yes, my young apprentice, <laughs> feel it, feel the both sides bullshit flow through you. Excellent. Mm -hmm. It's all part of my plan. Because it, it just was, you know, it, it's it's so mundane now. Mm -hmm. But I think people have gotten to the point, and I, I like to give our podcast, Blue Gal, mm -hmm. a little bit of credit for this. I think so. I mean, at, um, at least I feel validated and vindicated sure by sure 444 do. people coming on Twitter. There's this guy named uh, Driftglass who, uh, <laughs> who said, Jesus, haploid Christ, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Hold back. I know. Yes. <laughs> Does Phil Griffin make you wear a shock collar? Is your bonus contingent on vomiting out the both sides light a certain number of times a day? Or are you just this unfathomably stupid? Because really, no, what's I, your sure other alternative? She works on Capitol Hill. Sure. And she wants Mitch McConnell to open his door when she has a question. Of course she does. And so we have this lap dog, and they have learned, the Republicans in Congress have learned from George W. Bush that you right. can cut reporters off and they will come panting to your ankle to get, you know, a quote from you. Yeah, President, give me turkey. Give me Remember? turkey, yeah. 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 And and I like the guy Os at Oscar Bob who replied to you and said, takes like Casey's or why Saliz is considered a journalist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, this is this is the one thing. The, the top line sentence, yeah. I've always agreed with Donald Trump over everything under this, like his opinion of the media is is heinous mm -hmm. and fascistic mm -hmm. and awful and self-serving and, and, and insane and ugly. But there's a fundamental fact that that our journalist, Casey Hunt, has a job mm -hmm. on television. Chuck Tom has a fucking job. I flip on Chris Hayes today. Who do I see? Jennifer Rubin and, and Bill Kristol being interviewed. And I'm just like. This is just – this has got to stop. Mm -hmm. You've got to stop putting people who've been horrendously wrong their entire life on the air, now rubbing their hands together going, wondering where all these horrible people came from. Yeah. Or just people who've been stamped out of the Saint, the Salism mold. Yep. Because there is – there's clearly – I mean this – I've said this a million times. I'll say it a million and one. There's clearly – a, a an explicit arrangement at the network level mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that says if you suck this kind of dick you will get ahead right if you don't you won't mm -hmm. and it's Phil Griffin making them do that 
or creating a permission structure where you only grow sycophantic douchebags like right. Chuck it, Todd. It may very well be journal from journalism school on that you have to learn this. Yeah, but I, I, I agree with that. You from nowhere bullshit. But once it fell apart, mm-hmm. once the story of the country became, this is again where I I, I delight in the I think fact you that see, I think you see something that a lot of the country doesn't. See, this, well, this refuses I, to see. I, well, I don't care about a lot of the country. A lot of the country is is asleep right now. A lot of the country, yeah. you know, like 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 Rick said in in Casablanca. Mm-hmm. I bet the whole country is asleep now. I bet they're asleep all over the world. Mm-hmm. I don't care what the rest of the country mm-hmm. thinks. Mm-hmm. What concerns me is the profession of journalism. Yeah. And the profession of journalism knew all the way back in 1994 what the fuck was going on inside the Republican Party. Because mm-hmm. they were reporting on it on the on the front page of the New York Times. As yeah. far back as the Bush administration, it was painfully clear that there were a whole bunch of lying traitors running the country, bankrupting the country, lying us into the wrong war, and that they would never be held accountable for it yeah. because journalists yeah. would simply not permit any accountability to enter that the, the conversation. At that point, it became really clear, oh, you're not on my side. Yeah, you're on their side. You've picked a side, and the only way to keep them, the, the the entire Republican Party, out of prison is to keep repeating that it's the whole system. It's everybody. It's all people. It's all politicians. It's it's Democrats. It's liberals. It's campus radicals. There's always some liberal out there somewhere who's just as bad that you can stuff into this. That, but the story of the country. And uh, let me repeat. This is why I'm delighted when I I do scan um, uh, crooked media. And hear them saying shit we said eight years ago. Mm-hmm. It did delight. Well, stuff that you wrote yeah. twelve years ago. Twelve yeah. years ago. Yeah. But it's that. Wait a minute. The most important story of our country, and they only talk about the Trump administration, but I'll go back fifteen years. Is the, the Republican Party has devolved into a shit pile of bigots and lunatics and right wing sycophants and gun nuts and theocrats and madmen. All being that used has, by billionaires. All being used to by loot billionaires. The system. To yep. loot the country. That is the story. Mm-hmm. And and you can if you press a phaser set to disintegrate to Chuck Todd's head, he will not say it. He mm-hmm. won't do it. He won't fucking say it. He won't. Mm-hmm. This is a weatherman who's who's got a hurricane, I've said this before also, blowing outside of his studio and been blowing outside of his studio for 20 years and won't use the word hurricane in his weather report. Mm-hmm. Clearly, someone either has hired him because he's a liar or has told him, unless you tell this specific lie over and over again, Phil Griffin, um, over and over again, you're fired. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. Casey Hunt is what happens, and Crystal is it's what happens, right, right. and Hugh Hewitt is what happens, right. and giving Joe fucking Scarborough his own show where he can scrub his own reputation is what happens. That's what you're watching is not the news. Right. What you're watching right. is a fucking puppet show, in which occasionally a little bit of Chris Hayes and a lot of Joy Reid and some Rachel Maddow leaks out that's actually true and relevant and real and refreshing, but they're just sideshows in this freak show. And there is no news anymore. There's just this performance piece designed to pretend that it, it's never the Republican Party. It's never their fault. And that's why I've been waging my own lonely war on pronouns, Blue Gal. Oh, yeah. Well, tell, me, tell us about that. It's one, one crazy trick, one weird trick to take your country back. <laughs> Wherever you are, by television, by radio, let's face it, you're in your basement holding on to a bag of Doritos. And, no, <laughs> no, wherever you are. 420. Blaze it. One talk over the line, sweet Jesus. One talk over the line. Whatever social media platform you have access to. Mm-hmm. My lonely war on nouns and pronouns. This this thing with Casey Hunt kind of tickles me because people jumped on it immediately. Yes. And they called our they called us into it immediately. Yep. Yep. We're like the go to both sides people. Which is great. So what it, That's what we no, want to wonderful. be. We're we're proud of it. Yeah. And, and and we will and and this has happened before with Chuck Todd and Chuck Todd got shamed to the point where he now just sneers and says, "I know you're a bunch of liberals going to say it's both sides, but it's not." He knows. <laughs> he knows. So, he he's heard us. He has heard us so every through time you, through you guys. Yeah. So here's here's my point. There's no such thing as the public. There's right, no such thing right. as the American people. Well, that was no her such- third mistake in that tweet because she does say Americans. Right. Fuck you. Yeah. There's no. <laughs> Not you, blue gal. I love my I love my wife dearly. No, no. But, but when she says that, you know, the it's it's their duty to Americans. Right. As Who soon is as, she talking to? As soon as yeah. you hear, as soon as you hear anyone from her to uh, Mike Barnacle 
cast. You know, they're cast. On, yep. Gassing on about the Americans and the public. And mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. there are no Americans. For the purpose of this discussion, other than geographically, there are no Americans. Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. us and there's them. And there's about 40% of the country who are brain dead, who have no idea that there is a government. Right. We're barely aware that any of this is going on. And if right. you poke him with a stick and say, what do you think about the fact that Donald Trump's a liar? They'll look up bleary eyed and say, Probably both sides. Yeah. Probably everybody yeah. does. You know, politicians, yeah. that's why I don't even pay well, attention. Well, and, and as I said to you the other day, it is the sign of a healthy democracy right. that, you know, the the people who are either too immature or not intelligent enough or you know, the problem is we have an awful lot of unintelligent people with incredibly yes. loud opinions these days. Yes. But, you know, I, I was struck. By the fact that while the uh, House and Senate were doing their little roundabout jig to get this horrendous tax bill passed, mm -hmm. um, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills was trending on Twitter. And <laughs> here are, you know, average intelligence, average uh, level of interest in anything, mostly young women tweeting about rich oh middle-aged women. Oh my God, and just... what they could buy and what they and, and acting completely unconsciously as the Greek chorus uh -huh. in a drama which they which has been presented to them packaged in order to sell zit cream yeah. and tampons yes. and cars. OK, um, aspirational cars so that three years down the road they might or, you know, when they get that real estate license, they might buy a Buick. Right. And tweet about it. Because tweeting yep. about it makes you the chorus. That's what gives you validity as the chorus these days. So uh, well, that's, that's that my really war on struck pronouncing. me that while we are having, you know, the the uh, individual mandate taken away, mm -hmm. um, which is going to affect the lives of all of these people tweeting about the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, except the Real Housewives of Beverly right. Hills. They will, they will be. Uh, their <laughs> Mrs. Lives will Mnuchin is going to yeah. be fine, right? Sure. Sure. Mrs. Trump is going to be fine whether she stays married to Donald or not. Uh, and, and they use terms at that level, like at this level, <laughs> you know, that you know that in Washington they talk about that. Well, here in the Beltway, we do this. Well, here in the Beltway, you don't have any unemployment ever. And so it's so easy to be cushioned from um, anything but any kind of consequence of saying both sides, because what both sides get you in that cushion is... Mitch McConnell's door opens to you, right. and that's but, then you succeeded. But, but they're saying, I mean, this, this is uh, right. you and I actually talked about this earlier. One of yeah, the things that drove me crazy mm -hmm. about a, a job I used to have was what I called the closed door lie. Yes, so right. my boss takes right. me, took me into her office, closed the door, and just lied about what I had done, what she had done, what we had agreed to. Just fucking lied. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. looking around, going, "Who the hell are you lying to? There's only me, you, and me here. We both know you're lying." What? And it was a performance piece. Yeah, yeah. She was putting on a little show. Yep. Uh, and it was a little show to show that I don't have to tell you the truth because fuck you. You work for me. I can fire you. Yep. So yep. the reason they, they, they are. Can so I give another example of that? Sure. I was in a relationship um, that was ending. That's all I'm going to say. It was definitely ending. It had taken a long time to break up and it was definitely ending. And I was leaving and I, I was going to be gone. And and this person knew I was going to leave. And at the last moment before I get <clears throat> in the car to go, this guy says to me, I just want to beg you not to go. Yes. <laughs> and I, I didn't laugh. I I looked at him and I was about to laugh. And I went, no, I'm not going to laugh. I'm not going to give him any emotional response at all. Right. Because it's not, I am so over this. Right. But he had to say... I'm begging you not to do this so he could tell himself for the next rest of his life, whatever, as long as he would ever remember me. Uh, I begged her not to go. <laughs> right. you know? Your Honor, I'd like to record. stipulate for the courts and for the record. <laughs> I beg, I'm begging I begged you her not, not to, to go. go. I begged her not. I, I <clears throat> did beg her not to go. I, you know, I may have treated her like crap for the entire time we dated, but I begged her not to go. <laughs> well, and, but, and but I, here's I, the thing. Yeah, that, these lies we tell ourselves, you know, that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the reason they tell this particular mm -hmm. both sides yeah. lie. Yeah. Which is a, which is the worst uh, the worst libel is absolutely the worst libel because mm -hmm. it props up all the other lies. Yep. Without it, the right would collapse in a month. Yep. They have to keep repeating it. They absolutely have to. They have to for their own internal need because they're all a member of this cult and the mm -hmm. cult collapses unless they all repeat the articles of faith over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Someone might wander off and notice that it's not true and come back and say, uh, it's bullshit. The shit we believe is nonsense. 
But mostly it's it's because they have to keep any substantive critique, actual liberal, you and me in the cornfield doing what we do every week, critique of the media and of politics the hell away from the corridors of power. They need to yeah. make sure yeah. that conversation doesn't happen. Yep. So what you could do out there, yes, because you have Facebook pages and you have Twitter accounts mm-hmm. and you have blogs, is is very simple actually. Every time. Every single time on social media you see someone use the word we when they mean Republicans. Mm -hmm. They Mm -hmm. they say the public when they're talking about Republicans. When they Mm -hmm. say Trumpism, when they're talking about Republicans. When they say Congress, they're talking about Republicans. Or when they say Americans want this or the public wants that. When you know goddamn well that Americans and the public do not enter into this. Yeah. Or or they they consciously, your own polls have told you they don't want this. Yeah, yeah. You tell them there is no we. There is no we. Yeah. You're talking about Republicans. There is no America. You're talking about Republicans. There is no Congress, quote unquote. You're talking about the Republican Congress, the Republican voters, not the Trump voters, mm-hmm. the Republican voters. And mm-hmm. just keep pushing on that. Mm-hmm. And it's going to take a certain amount of time because it, God knows it took 15 years to get both sides to do it. to become Yeah, a to be, have 400 people replying yeah. to Casey Hunt. And we are Instantly. so proud of all of you doing Instantly. that. Yep. And, and every time, and I get a lot of these, people send these over to me all the time, which mm-hmm. is, could you see this? Did you see this? And I'm, no, I'm always grateful. so it. appreciate it. Believe, being our eyes and ears is so fantastic. Thank you. Thank but you. every time, you know, Mike Barnacle or some other equivalent douchebag says, mm-hmm. you know, the American public is just sick of it. No, no. They're not sick of this. Quit mm-hmm. lying about it. Yep, yep, yep. Republicans are lying to you, and Democrats want them to stop. That's what's happening. Corre- yep. If you simply annoyingly, persistently – now, granted, my wife and I are not blue check marks on Twitter. No, we're not. Uh, and we never will be. Uh, and Coulter has a blue check mark on Twitter. There are people who ha- who should have blue check marks before we do as well. Oh, yeah, Digby. That don't. Digby, so, Digby. Yeah. A Duncan Digby, Black show. Digby and, and Carolee and – yeah. Oh, there's yeah. plenty of people. But yeah. the people – and what that means is that by and large, uh, if you say this, you will not be acknowledged by even people on your well, own I side. I don't think it has anything to do with that. I think it's sexism and I think it's whether you have a book out and I think it's a lot of yeah. other things. But yeah. Well, I, mean, I mean the yeah. absence of that means you will not – odds are you will never get a response from right. anyone you're actually right. talking to. Right, right. They can, I have never they had can actually from, filter you out if they have a blue no, check mark. No one yeah. from Media Matters has ever returned my call. Right, right. Which is annoying. Nobody from Crooked Media has ever responded to me ever. Mm-hmm. So uh, I get it. Uh, I'm not, you know. It's, I'm, it's not because they haven't heard you. It's that they physically don't see your tweets no, because they, they I, filter I'm you out. out. Yeah, yeah. I'm not of the body. Right. <laughs> uh, but if you pile up enough of these, yeah, um, it pushes through. It does. It One does. or two people doing it is just that annoying son of a bitch drift mm-hmm. class talking about David Brooks again. Yeah, but, but 400 I, people doing 400 it. 400 people doing it gets people's attention. And that's what's less important than that, but also a corollary is when people use the word Trump or Trumpism instead of Republicans. That's the general thing is America and the American people and Congress. Okay, that's generalizing it. Then they try to go too far in the other direction and make it specifically about Trump. Right. And some people are start on in on television are starting to get it. I noticed uh, not to his credit, Chris Hayes had on uh, Bill Crystal tonight, which and is Jennifer part of Bill, Chris, Bill Crystal wants to build a lifeboat. That's why he's going on. Yeah. Look, I was on MSNBC. I must not be all bad. Right. But Chris Hayes said to him, you know, you can say what you want to about Donald Trump being bad and wrong and all this. But right. what he's doing policy wise, especially internationally, is neocon orthodoxy. And what he's doing and economically Bill no, with not. the tax cuts is Republican orthodoxy. And Bill Crystal just so, knows that. No, it's no, not. It's not. No, it's not. Is, you know, because China, China, and Japan, and China—they're all very because and, before yeah. before all liars occupied the right, there was Bill Crystal. Bill Crystal right. is one of the original right. Right. evil human beings on the right. 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 So he'll just lie. Right. I mean, he'll just right. fucking he lie. Just lie. They'll, they'll just because lie. that's the thing. There's this weird idea that somehow they're different because they disagree with each other. They're right. all lying. They're all they're lying. All lying. <laughs> exactly. They're all horrible people. Well, and, putting, and, and he today, uh, when Nikki Haley embarrassed us before the entire world, and uh, here was Bill Crystal on Twitter saying, uh, prepare for Nikki Haley to be president in 2022 <laughs> or whatever. I said, oh, come on, you picked Sarah Palin. Right. You, know? right. you don't it, get to do this anymore. Your sorting hat is broken. Your it sorting never hat worked. was broken a long time it never ago. never worked. Yeah. Okay. We need to get to the news roundup. Um, I want to do one I, more thing. 
I know you you have a choice. You can do Tom Brokaw or David Brooks. Oh, David you Brooks. Can't do David Brooks. <laughs> David Brooks. It's an easy choice. Um, and because David Brooks is such is such a very clear example of the the conscious premeditated lying that David Brooks does. Um, Tom Brokaw is just a doddering old fool. Uh, and they come, but David Brooks. The reason I bring this up is. This this happened last Friday on the news hour. Uh, when David Brooks, uh, who is the king of all both siders, um, absolutely needs this to be what ha- what's happening with the Trump administration has to be part of a larger political failure that is equally distributed on both sides, mm-hmm. or else he disappears. He would he would mm-hmm. evaporate. That is literally that is uh, that is literally his only job is to go on television and say the words both sides. He he is a compulsive liar. He's been a compulsive, rotten, stinking, filthy liar for decades, and he is treated with deference and respect because he talks very softly and adjusts his glasses and seems very meek and mild. But he's, he's the worst of the bunch. So on Friday, he's on one of his many, many shows. You know, he's on NPR, and he's on PBS, and he's on Meet the Press. He's got a whole media universe built around him. And he goes on, uh, he goes on the News Hour and says the following – and so the Obama administration, given this big problem, decided to spend their entire administration talking about the health insurance markets, blah, blah, blah. What he was saying was over the last two administrations and the political establishment going back 12 years now, that's a direct quote, nobody has done anything about, uh, about social mobility or wage inequality. And that the Obama administration wasted all their time on the health insurance market. So, you know, doing the Affordable Care Act, which is essentially a trivial thing. Sure, it's important, but blah, blah, blah. They but didn't that do passed any... in 2010, and and then the Congress <sighs> was Republican after that, and they blocked everything you well, wanted to do for the rest of the time. That's what I was yelling at the TV. <laughs> but uh, and, and usually, you know, Mark Shields is his jolly little sidekick who sits yeah. there and shakes his jowls and goes, oh, 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 my good friend David Brooks, mm-hmm. we will have to subtly disagree on this. But let's talk about the good old days with Scoop Jackson because yeah. Mark Shields doesn't want confrontation. <laughs> he doesn't That's want true. to talk. Oh, I, said, I believe true. I said Scoop Jackson the or Darius the second. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, something that yeah. happened a very long time ago that we yeah. can all agree was a long time ago. Yeah. But Mark Shields, shockingly. Uh, actually called him out. And he said, not to be prickly, but Barack Obama confronted the worst economic recession since the Great Depression. Mm-hmm. And he had a, and he had 105 sustained months of job growth and economics, which Donald Trump's about to squander. Mm-hmm. And those two things are not the same. Wow. Um, he said that? Those two things are not the same. Wow. And and Mark Shields and then and then David Brooks came back with, well, you know, sure, the health care thing. And yeah, there was this recession. That was pretty bad. It didn't affect me personally. So fuck you, little people. Yeah, really, really. I got my money back. So it could have been that bad. Uh, and I kept my job because, hey, I sucked the right dicks. So I'm never right. going to be unemployed. But he came back with, well, yeah, he could have done that. But he didn't, re- he didn't pivot to the Michigans and the Pennsylvanias and the Ohios and, and did infrastructure, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God. At which point, Mark Shields usually would step aside. and, But Mark yeah. Shields said, well, you're right, but I just want to point out one thing, and that is saving the United States automobile industry. Uh-huh. In Ohio and Michigan, we're not minor accomplishments. Yes. And they were opposed by the Republicans and the Republican standard bearer. Right, right. So David Mitt Brooks Romney got, didn't want to do it. Yep. David Brooks got rocked back on his heels. Yep. The, 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 the NPR equivalent of, of Mark Shields brought a, a, a gun to a knife fight. Yes, you he know, did. He yes, really he did. did just say, oh, fuck. And yeah. there was a whole bunch more that he could have said about. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, he could have done our our little rant. Sure. But he I've didn't. Done, I, have a, yeah. I have a long list of all the things the Obama administration did in a very short window of 70 days or 72 days. They had to do anything and fixing manufacturing and on and on and on. But <clears throat> for oh, Mark Obama Shields, had three jobs bills presented yeah. before the Congress that were oh, just yeah. laughed off. Yeah, by infrastructure McConnell. bills yeah. and jobs bills and recovery bills. The Republican Party blocked every single one of them, sank them because the black guy had proposed them. Period. Mm-hmm. Because they wanted to see the economy burn because then it would make the angry assholes angry enough to go to the polls and vote and to vote cut their them. own throats. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So yep. so David Brooks has been has offered proffered these lies and Mark Shields on national television slaps him down. Mm-hmm. Okay? Clear. You, you told the thing, you're lying. Here's the truth. And David Brooks looks like somebody just pooped in his oatmeal. Mm -hmm. Great. So two days later in the New York Times, David Brooks. Our political leadership has shown an amazing ability to look the other way. George Bush fought a war on terror. Obama devoted his presidency to expanding health insurance. I wonder if he had written that already and turned it in. (laughs) That's the point. And Donald Trump is all talking to a policy. That's the point. Yep. Yep. The lie comes first. Yep. He doesn't fucking care. You have to really, really be... 
a, a, a bottom feeding scumbag. Or incredibly lazy, entire, which is, I, I just no, think he is fundamentally no. lazy. I don't think yeah. so. I think I think he's an evil person. I think no. David Brooks is a genuinely yeah. despicable human being because <laughs> David Brooks lived through the entire Obama administration. Yep. He didn't just yep. fall off a turnip truck yesterday. He went through everything yep. you and I went through. Yeah, that's true. And wrote and every he, every week about it. Yeah. And his whole shtick is, I'm in Washington. I'm tight with congressmen. I got the inside scoop. I know everything that's going on. You can trust me. I can give you the inside story. And he sat through the Obama administration, watched all of this, and he came away with, well, Barack Obama just spent his whole administration yeah. dicking around with health care, yeah. didn't do no, anything yeah, on else. Yeah, purpose is lying. You're right. And You're he right. did it yeah. twice. And he was corrected yeah. in the middle of it and did it twice because yeah. David Brooks is a professional – fucking liar and the people at the new york times know it and they keep him on staff because he tells the lies that makes the schulzberg family's ganglia tingle he and tells drift glass your five minutes of david brooks is up <laughs> on to the news. Ding. we love you drift glass i love you too I, and i say that we like a pronoun like there's some we out there besides me who loves you and there is but well you've made america strong again blue gal so i <laughs> All right, through the news, the tax yeah. monstrosity has passed as of yeah. this this reading. Uh, word has it that Susan Collins has gone into hiding, mm -hmm. and that Bob Corker is now affecting a very thick Spanish accent when he answers the phone. <laughs> oh, no, 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 es Roberto aquí, no. <laughs> and yeah. because you know, and, yeah. but this is the thing: the, the it, we were literally, and not we uh, uh, on the left here, because we know better. But the press was literally holding out this little tiny candle. Well, maybe Susan Collins isn't a total fucking whore. Yeah. Maybe. But nope. Nope. They're all this way. The whole party. The whole party. We uh, celebrated today uh, the news that the um, J-20 inauguration protesters, the first six that were put to trial, <laughs> all of them were found innocent. Uh, the jury, it was a jury trial. All totally. of them were found not guilty. Maybe and, laugh or... Uh, one of my colleagues said to me, well, that's a silver lining to the week's news. And I said, no, no, this is not this is not a silver lining for us. Yesterday, when the tax bill passed, was a silver lining for Donald Trump. It's the only thing he's done all year. Right. And it's really important. I know this is a loss for us, and I know it sucks, and I'm furious about it. And I've been angry and thrashing in my own brain and you know, being nasty, to, looking for people to fight with on Twitter about it um, because I'm angry and we all are going to face more things to be angry about in the next year because they're going to be in control. And until they're not, we're going to be angry. And and that's my point. Their purpose, the, the conservative purpose in politics is to make liberals mad. Right. Sad. Sad or sad. mad. Either, sad. One. Mad, <laughs> Either one. But sad mad, or mad is fine. <laughs> mad we take to the streets and things yeah. happen. Sad, crying. You know, the the yeah. when, when uh, just a brief aside, when um, uh, Al Franken uh -huh. announced his resignation, we have an act. Resigning as of January 2nd. Yeah. Yep. When he announced that, we have an actual right wing, an actual crazy Nazi person. Mm-hmm who drops us a line every now and then. Mm -hmm. And it's always after some major, because this pathetic loser weakling has nothing else in his life, but it's always after some major, you know, uh, tragedy or major, major problem on our side. Um, and it was, you know, dry your tears, blue gal. <laughs> it's okay. Al Frank, you know, do, yours, yeah. come on down in the sewer with the rest of us. Light, and, but it, it really is. That's all they live for is to make us yeah, sad. Yeah. And I apologize for interrupting. And No, that's okay. Um, but but yeah, the silver lining, this this was Trump's silver lining. And that's and so the the point about that is, um, number one, we're winning over and over and over again. Wherever we are fighting him, we're winning. What Donald Trump got this week with the tax cut was the absolute easiest thing he could get from Republicans because it is Republican orthodoxy to cut taxes. True. And this is something Chris Hayes was saying that, hey, when Lisa Murkowski stood next to Trump smiling because he's going to sign this tax bill and we got it done and she, you know, shook hands with everybody. It's because she really is happy about it because tax cuts are what they do. Yeah. And if they, he could not have gotten this done, he it's a, completely over for him. Plus she gets to drill in Anwar now. The, and she gets to draw, drill in Anwar. Mm -hmm. And but but. My whole point is that if he couldn't get this done, then then the Republican Party, in terms of its donor class, has no use for any of them. This was the absolute bottom 
of what could they accomplish. Mm -hmm. And so they, they reached, you know, they stood up, they're like a baby standing up right in front of the sofa, pulling themselves up and then falling back on their diaper and everyone cheers because they did that one thing, the easiest thing that they could do. And it's not, um, you know, they're, they, we have to, you're typing out there, they have to protect their phony baloney jobs. Right. It is. It's from, it's from Blazing Saddles. Um, the other thing about this, uh, two things about this, uh, this tax cut bill. You were talking about David Brooks being a bad person. Very bad evil person. person. Deliberately I bad have, person. I, I think if you went back to 419 podcasts, I don't think you will ever find me, I don't believe, saying that someone is soulless. Mm -hmm. Because in my heart and in my theology, I do don't believe that. Uh, but Mitch McConnell came very damn close this week. Mm -hmm. After the tax cut bill, he went and sat down, as a bunch of really awful people did, um, to talk with uh, Axios, to mm -hmm. talk with Mike Allen and have this thing, uh, this event. And of course, it's in D.C., so they can just go there. And that's we've talked about that before. Boy, if you can have access to people in that way, you can do what you want to do. And you have the money to put a uh, J.P. Morgan Chase backdrop. Literally, J.P. Morgan Chase is printed all over the backdrop of this thing, which just to me, you know, come on. Yeah. Uh, but Mitch McConnell said that the t passing the tax cut was not his proudest moment of the year. Proudest moment of the year was Neil Gorsuch because he had something to do with making sure that seat was open. You sure did. And he's sitting there bragging about it. Of course he is. And I thought, okay, that to that is as close to soulless in my mind as you can get. That you would it is it is like an abusive ex boyfriend coming over and saying, uh, yeah, I don't feed the kids, but look, I stole this big screen TV for you. Yes. You know, I am going to hurt the base of this party with my tax cuts. I'm going to hurt the base of this party fucking around with their health care. And I don't care. No. I got Gorsuch. Yeah. And that and all that means is he's protecting big business. He's protecting corporations. He's protecting his class of people. And he stole the property of the black guy. Of the black man. And he's right. proud of it. He's, he's proud, proud of, it. of it. And all of his little racist yep. party apparatchiks are equally proud of it because they're yep. monstrous human beings. Yep. Uh, but getting so, back to the uh, jury decision. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, can I talk about this for a minute? Because I, sure. I wrote this up today. And yeah. uh, I thought it was, I thought it was a funny story. The, the six on trial, uh, again, it's the J20 uh, resistance group, uh, Inauguration Day protesters who've already had their lives turned upside down by a mass arrest and a prosecution that, uh, you know, the Chicago, it's Chicago 7 style prosecution. It's we're going to round people up. We're going to pick the ones we think we can get uh, and make this a trial, uh, put put protesting on trial. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> uh, Assistant U.S. Attorney <laughs> Jennifer Kirkhoff, uh, I feel should be disbarred for this performance, but uh, she'll probably future, become future Trump federal judge. Future, I think she will become a Trump federal judge for doing this. Yeah. Um, first of all, it involves six people. Um, one or two of them were medics. One of them was a reporter working for an, a California paper, California Weekly or Independent. Um, they were in Washington D.C. on the day of the Trump inauguration. On that day, a horde of black hooded protesters uh, marched around the streets, breaking windows in McDonald's and Starbucks and banks, big banks. Right. Uh, they set a few cars on fire. Um, they did not kill anyone, as far as I know. And uh, But six of the, these people, including at least one medic and one reporter, were put on trial in the, over the past four weeks. Um and uh, there are still over 185 people being charged with crimes related to the uh, this this event. Um, but generally speaking, uh, prosecutors bring the best case first so they can make plea bargain deals with the rest of them. Okay, right. what Assistant U.S. Attorney Jennifer Kirkhoff did in court was now a she brought James O'Keefe video <laughs> as proof <laughs> as proof of anything that happened. Um, she also brought uh, some YouTubes from some conspiracy websites, yes. which the defense attorney, you know, knew which knew where these videos came, had to know where these videos yeah. were coming from and tossed them down. Um, she told the jury in her closing argument that the concept of reasonable doubt is, quote, clearly written by a bunch of lawyers. It doesn't mean a whole lot. <laughs> Which caused the judge to stop her closing argument mm -hmm. 
and tell the jury that as far as the bench was concerned, <laughs> she did not mean what she just said. <laughs> oh, yes, I did. <laughs> Uh, the main witness against the uh, six uh, defendants was a policeman who was not at the protest. <laughs> <laughs> but he was psychically. <laughs> well, um, it, the, the, this she was God. he was not at at the the protest where she where the the prosecutor claimed the crime had occurred. He was uh, not there. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The defense attorneys uh, went into the Twitter uh, account of this policeman and found out that. He has for a very long time followed James O'Keefe oh, and 4chan conspiracy god. theorists on Twitter. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. So he knew all about it. <laughs> he was Let me tell you about this. And tell all about 4chan conspiracy theorists about into How do you say it? Antifa. Antifa? Okay. I, I got a bunch of stuff in my van. Wait a minute. I'll go get it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, she, when she put the medic on the stand, she asked her more than once why she was carrying gauze. <laughs> what? Do you, what? It's just a protest. Why did you have to carry gauze with you? Uh-huh. 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 Your Honor, I rest my case. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy. But the, the, the Finally, but her point. And this is the last one. Finally, uh -huh. her whole case was based on guilt, not only by association, but by mere location. She told the jury... You don't have to personally be the one that breaks the window to be guilty of rioting. Now, uh, that is true. What what she meant to say uh -huh. was you don't have to be the one that breaks the window to be guilty of incitement. But in, the incitement case had been brought before a judge and had already been tossed out. Right. So she couldn't say incitement. That was a separate trial and a separate charge apparently that's, that's a, bit, a federal that's... charge i don't exactly understand why that one charge was brought before the judge earlier but it was so she couldn't say that well it's uh, also that... a very big word yeah <laughs> incitement yeah. <laughs> so as i said in my post at crooks and liars um one outlet interviewed a juror and kept that person anonymous uh, called him Steve, but that's not his real name. Um, Steve said, yes, the jury had very careful discussions about each piece of evidence, but at no time was there a possibility that we would find the defendants guilty. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, Particularly when the jury when we went, okay, we have to go over this, but oh my God. Steve, I think Steve might have said that my mind was made up when she started offering MAGA merch in the back of the court <laughs> in the back courtroom. back of the courthouse. <laughs> my best-selling book, I'm going to be a federal judge. <laughs> it's published by Regnery Press. Regnery Press, plus free MAGA hat every MAGA time. Hat. <laughs> yeah. At that moment, the judge realized something other than an actual trial and actual jurisprudence was going on here. Yeah. But this is what totalitarian states look like. Well, and this is what this was my point in the post. And I will quote myself, uh -huh. it's terrifying that we depend on the incompetence of Trump's administration to keep right. our Constitution alive. That is terrifying. Um, but it's true. I mean, this is this is what's going on. And the the continual, you know, we had here Donald Trump had the one real legislative victory of the year. And how does yeah. he celebrate it? He has this cabinet meeting. Yeah. Which well, is straight uh, out of, yeah. you know, Korea, North well, Korea. Straight out of Saddam Hussein's, you know, right. or Stalin. Right. right. It yeah. absolutely. And, and it's cringe. And it's not the first one. This no. is the normal practice now that we all gather yeah, around yeah. and worship the dear leader. Yeah. Well, and, and what was it that you said to uh, Bill Crystal yesterday about this on Twitter? Because Bill Crystal said, it sort of makes me sort of makes me sick, yeah, yeah. right? I, I said, call me when you're terminal. Yeah, yeah. yeah Tell me yeah. when it really hits you yeah. that this is something you built. Yeah. Well, this, yeah. And, but I think Donald Trump's going to slow down a little bit with this because he has to count all of his new money. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because all apparently, right, let's get back to the news roundup, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Exactly. Well, apparently, the the giant uh, tax monstrosity that they ran through uh, will personally save him as much as fifteen million dollars a year, uh, and his son-in-law, little Jared, uh, his bribe will come to about twelve million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. a bunch of other people will see millions and millions of dollars, of dollars worth of tax benefits, mm -hmm. um, which is absolutely the opposite of what this lying sack of shit said all during his campaign and over absolutely. the last year. And well, and what he said to Sherrod Brown, Sherrod Brown gave a very good speech yeah. where he said, look, I presented two bills that I have written myself to Donald Trump in the Oval Office. One allowed uh, 
corporations to repatriate money at a lower tax rate if they invested in, in new machinery, new factories, yes. and new jobs in the United States. Yes. And the other one was a similar bill that put American industry jobs within the United States first and then the tax benefits second. Yes. And Donald Trump said to me, I like both these ideas. And then he opens the door to the Senate chamber and he points to the hallway and he says, down this hallway is Mitch McConnell's office and the lobbyists were lined up and they didn't bring sacks of money out physically. They just brought promises of sacks of money sure. out of Mitch McConnell's office. And uh, Gary Cohn <laughs> yeah. at at the Axios thing uh, said, we really wanted to get um, rid of the carried interest loophole. We tried 25 times to get rid of the, the carried interest loophole. We tried so hard. We tried there, so hard. We tried 25 times. That big white building down Pennsylvania Avenue, the Capitol building. They wouldn't let us. Wouldn't let us do it. They now, wouldn't I thought let Donald us. Trump was a deal maker. Yeah, he is. That's the deal he made. Why doesn't he just veto this tax bill then? Yeah. It didn't give him what he wanted. Yeah. He gave him what he wanted. $15 million a he year. Gave him a win. No, I, he gave him what he wanted. A win. Whatever yeah. that is. Yeah. yeah. And as, as uh, has been pointed out, if you just rolled the estate tax back. Yeah, this by was the way, a little lobbyist. Yeah. By the way, the reason yeah. tax rates were 94% during the Eisenhower administration was to force industrialists to spend their profits reinvesting in their property and their people and their equipment and their right. roads and their bridges. That was the whole purpose. The reason there was a high tax rate was we we don't we don't object you to being rich, yeah. but being obscenely multi generational plutocracy is inimical to democracy. We want you right. to spend the money you make in this country. On this country. And on your employees. Period. Yeah, right. And if you right. don't do it, we're going to take it away from you and we'll find something else to do with it. We'll feed yeah. starving children with it. Speaking right. of which, if you just took the estate tax rollback out alone, alone. that would pay yeah. for chip insurance for poor children for 50 years. Five and uninsured mothers who are having babies now and <laughs> we're about to be told... Uh, no, you when when your baby delivers in February, you will not have insurance. Yeah. And well, and, and one of the you know one of the side effects, one of the side mm -hmm. benefits that that uh, President Stupid is now bragging about is mm -hmm. uh, that the uh, his tax bill also essentially repeals Obamacare. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. we didn't want to bring it up until the legislation did pass. Well, why not? You're proud yeah. of it. You bragged yep. on it. You said yep. you wanted to do it. Well, it was because the same— Because of the resistance, that's why. The, the, and the resistance should have been in the streets for this one. But yep. being in the yep. streets for a tax bill that's big and complicated is hard. Yep. Being in the streets for taking insurance away— Well, the week away, before Christmas is yeah. hard, too. Yeah, yeah, it is. They timed it just right. But they're, this the point yeah. being, it's not like these people ever give up on their shitty ideas. No. Because in front of them are a bunch of hippies with signs who would very much like the money to be spent on poor children and infrastructure and education and families. Mm -hmm. Behind mm -hmm. them are a whole bunch of rich motherfuckers who say, unless you bulldoze these people, roll over these fuckers and take away everything they have and give it to me, I'm going to stop funding your goddamn campaign right. and your political career is over. It's right. not even a question for Republicans anymore. Right. They're right. owned, wholly owned, etc. cetera. Right. Uh, um, and you know what? What's Donald, that? Donald Trump spoke to his very good friend, Rupert Murdoch, uh, yeah. who used to be a never Trumper. Uh, yeah. About two minutes. This Fox, remember back when Fox News was never Trump? Yeah. And insulted Megyn Kelly because she had blood and did shooting yeah. out. Uh, yeah. yeah, that didn't yeah. last very long, did it? Because no. they're, they're fucking state TV. They're Pravda. They're his vest. Yeah. And so uh, apparently Donald Trump spoke with his good friend, Rupert Murdoch, ahead of the Disney deal to make sure Rupert wasn't selling Fox News. Oh, because well, and why? Because Fox News, state TV and the Republican Party are now in the process <clears throat> of openly trafficking in Mueller conspiracy bullshit. Right. Right. And where would Donald Trump be without an entire TV network of whores and sellouts and racists and, and scumbags to tell all the no necks and the mouth breathers and the meat bags out there that Donald Trump is as pure as the driven snow is right. all a terrible so conspiracy of a bunch of liberals Disguised mm -hmm. as FBI agents, I like Robert Mueller, who's basically a commie pinko. Honestly, guy. honestly. And to, and because you have to keep the people on Fox talking about something other than the fact that the guy they elected is a traitor, 
And they're in other words, in other words, sedition. Let's face yeah. it. Let's not talk about sedition. Let's talk Judge about Judge Janine has been engaged in sedition yeah. on open, her show. Open, yeah. public, open, public, sedition. highly profitable yeah. sedition. Yeah, well, yep. a bunch of bitter old men jerk off to her in their basements. Yep, yep. that's what Fox News is about. Uh, apparently. Uh, we need to give Fox something to talk about other than sedition. So that's why we're going to reopen the Uranium One deal. Uranium <laughs> One deal. The one that I believe it was uh, Joy, a woman named Joanne Reed just yeah. disassembled on the yep. air in under about four minutes. Yep. But and, no. and there's a terrific GIF on Twitter, by the way, of if you go on to the GIF box and click on it, and beating a dead horse. Uh-huh. It's it's an old like uh, colonial engraving of a man with tights on beating his, his engraving of a dead horse over and over again. Very very funny. Um, and because use, use that one, yeah. And because it's not necessarily going to be complete enough, full enough mm-hmm. to fill up um, the mouth hole of Sean Hannity, mm-hmm. you need to give him something else to talk about. So Devin Nunez, you know, <laughs> yeah. Devin. Who doesn't know what the word recused means? Nunes. Devin Mensa Nunes? <clears throat> yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> has been investigating, has been investigating the investigators. Oh, I've been yeah. investi- I'm doing a super secret Republican only. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And, and he's also apparently gumming up um, the works when it comes to issuing subpoenas. And they're, they're sabotaging yeah. it. Yeah. The Republicans ha- are sabotaging any investigation into Russia in every On the part of Congress. Because, yeah. let me repeat this, they're all fucking awful. All of yep. them. If you have an R after your name, you're a bad person. Mm-hmm. Let me just be very clear about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Apparently, Donald Trump was warned by the FBI in 2016, 2016, that Russia would try to infiltrate his campaign. Didn't give a shit. Well, apparently, uh, now we're a year later, and Robert Mueller has his hands on the uh, Trump transition emails, which the Trump people are, like, furious about. You're not supposed to read my shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Cambridge Analytica. Who mm-hmm. just want to go to jail? Uh, also handed over their emails to the Mueller team. Um, now, two very important things uh, that happened in Virginia in, over the last week. Mm-hmm. That yeah, they really need to listen to because these are dark times. It is literally the darkest night of the year. Uh, mm-hmm. It's easy to be depressed. It's easy to feel defeated by all this, but activist pressure works. Yes, it does. Voting is so important. It is so, even when the person you vote for is not perfect, is not the best person you've ever heard in your life. It matters. Uh, Ralph Northam, who is a newly elected Democratic governor of Virginia, uh, said to some Washington Post reporter when he was just sort of uh, gassing on about his legislative thinking on things that he wouldn't be pressuring Republicans to expand Medicaid. And then activists let him know all across the country that, oh, no, 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 no. Fuck that. You said during your campaign you would do this. And one week later, he said that he would continue to advocate for Medicaid expansion because it's a no-brainer for Virginia. Yeah, it activist is. activist pressure works. Mm-hmm. Activists across the country got this guy elected. Let's be clear. Voters got him elected. Yeah, and, and the number one issue elected. coming out of those polls was health care. Yeah. And so it's he, going to be next next November, it's going to be health care. It's not going to be Donald Trump's tweets, folks. It's going to be because mothers and fathers are lying awake at night over Christmas wondering what they're going to do if their medically fragile children don't have health insurance. Yes, absolutely. And you never forget that. You no. never forget that and you never forgive it. You threaten my fucking kids, you assholes. And your kids don't and, forget it either. No. Yeah. Well, your kids don't forget that you made your Republicans made my mother cry, right? Right. right. They you don't forget that. No. Nope. And that's and I I do agree with Joy Reid and her source, whoever her source was, that they're just cashing out at this point. Yeah, at this point because they're leaving. They see, they see what Mitt Romney saw in 2012, which is the demography of this country is changing rapidly. Mm-hmm. And more people are going to need government to help them than don't forever. <laughs> Because that's just the way the demography and the economy and everything is going. We are now in a gilded age where, okay, you're going to take all the money. You're going to take all the manufacturing out of this country and move it where it's cheaper. You're not going to let health care be taken care of by society. You're going to just make it... uh, you know, dog for, eat dog for, yeah, for healthcare. A profit That's what it's sure. going to be. Uh-huh. And so, uh, and and you're going to threaten seniors' health care now too with automatic cuts. Really? Sure. sure. You know, this is where they're at. So they're cashing out. They're because stealing. They know, they're stealing yeah. everything that isn't nailed down because they're right. not long for because this. They're world. not coming back, and well, they know. And, and, and you, I talked to you about the three card money guy. Yep. You know. 
who will grab all the cash and jam it in his pockets and run as fast as he can so, before he gets shot. Yeah. Because that's the only, you know you're going to get caught eventually. You know you're going to be uh, uh, found out. Right. Donald Trump knows he's going to be found out. He's done this before in other other places and other venues. But there, remember, uh, the last eight years of Obama have, sh- have proven they're perfectly comfortable being the minority party. They love being the minority party because then, mm-hmm. they, then they're all their bitter, white, racist, asshole, old men can sit back and complain about the Democrats and not actually have to worry about governing or answering all those embarrassing questions about the fact that you're, you're, you're nominated well, and there, less. there are plenty of rich people in this country who will pay them to block exactly. the regulation and the and the jobs bills and the investment that uh, is needed. All, so you're not, all they need to do is 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 stall and block yeah, and need sabotage. To stall, then that's easy. Cover yeah. their exit. Yeah. For, you know, all yeah. they have to do is burn all the bridges behind and, them and be willing to abuse everything that is right in moral behavior. And they've already and be shown proud of it. They've already and shown they they're willing to do yeah. that. That's yeah. that's who they are. So speaking of Virginia, control of the legislature came down to one single vote because voting actually counts. Except, as my wife pointed out, when a judge says, no, we'll do it by a lottery instead. Yeah, we're going to say it's it's 50-50 and do a lottery. And yeah. so uh, we'll, we'll see how that unfolds. All right, let's blitz um, through the last of this. Roy yeah. Moore still hasn't conceded. Uh, instead, he does what, what Republicans always do. Uh, he's posting conspiracies and going after Doug Jones' gay son on Facebook. Because, hey, uh, it's not he blamed black people. I assume he also blamed Hispanics. Hispanics. I'm uh, sure. I assume he'll get around to lesbians and LGBT later. Well, he he uh, he blames Democrats for registering black. He said a lot of black voters, a lot of Hispanic voters. You know, they were they registered. Uh-huh. They reg- you know they registered last minute apparently. You know to vote against him. Sure. And it was uh-huh. it was all these. Uh, New voters voting against him, then that's that's why things turned out the way they did. Who don't he know won't their say place. lost, but yeah, they don't know their well, place. All of that is implied, you know. Uh, well, I'd like to jump ahead a little bit and talk about uh, other people who blame Democrats. Um, <laughs> sure. Uh, apparently, Tucker Carlson had to bump his newest bested sidekick and best buddy, uh, Glenn Greenwald, to make room for Jill Stein mm. to, to come on his show and whine about the fact that. Clinton Democrats dragged me into the Russia probe as a punishment for 2016. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, that's okay, exactly Jill. what happened, Jill. Okay, yeah, Jill. Yeah. You keep again, fucking that chicken, Jill. Go and, right ahead. And okay. again, Tucker Carlson had to, had to move Glenn Greenwald well, yeah, to yeah, the side right, so he right. could make room for Jill Stein. Even liberal Jill Stein hates Clinton. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, as go. I've said before, I have worn the soles out of my I told you so shoes three times in the last <laughs> year. But fuck you, fuck you, if I didn't tell you all this was yeah. going to happen. Anyway, uh, the Trump FCC have repealed net neutrality. They've also decided for the, the the CDC, you know, the people who make sure you don't die of a plague or shit like mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. Uh, should stop using words like diversity and fetus and transgender and vulnerable and entitlement and science-based because you don't want science in there anywhere or evidence-based because evidence is just scary shit that makes us look stupid uh, in any of their 2018 budget documents, which is yeah. just, you know, it's not even it's not even Orwellian anymore. It's we don't or- we don't ban words in America. Sorry, we don't do that. Yeah. And uh, the um, the equal the excuse me human rights commission the the pro LGBT rights organization human rights campaign. the yep. human rights campaign uh, beamed those words onto the Trump Hotel in Washington D.C. this week. So, and then also <laughs> there were some women dressed as handmaids this morning <laughs> singing uh, Christmas carols. We wish you a quick impeachment. Yeah. Uh, we wish you a quick impeachment. <laughs> And uh, a Hispanic cellmate. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I also want to point out that Democrats, <laughs> Democrats have been remarkably unified and remarkably uh, well uh, disciplined for the last year, but they fucked up. Mm-hmm. Uh, they bailed on their pledge to force a vote on DACA. Yeah, you know they did. Um, in the House, yep, uh, twelve of them did. Yep. Uh, but uh, the rest of them, I was pretty. Impressed when when they're told by Nancy Pelosi or whoever it is to go tweet about this. Right. Uh, there was a I looked up Chip on Twitter and there was a mount the same kind of K- Casey Hunt yep. you know four hundred yep. <laughs> there were there were hundreds of tweets from members of Congress explaining exactly why they voted no yep. uh, and saying I voted against this continuing resolution because it doesn't include. Uh, help for the dreamers and it's not a permanent solution to chip and extending chip for three months isn't enough and making parents go through this again in march is not enough and so they really were 
unified in that regard. Um, they just found 12 bailers, you know, right. who, who, and it, that's all it took. Yeah. Uh, and we can vote those people out too. If that's, if that's what it takes, well, um, and, and, you know, and, I'm, I see that. Yeah, go ahead. On that point, uh, according to the generic ballot sort of uh, polls are out mm-hmm. and voters now prefer Democrats by 10 points on, on every generic ballot in 2018 midterm elections. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the swing and, has been it, massive, massive. And, uh, under 35s, uh, Democrats enjoy not 48 points. They enjoy a 48 point lead. Right. 61 to 34, I believe it is. A blue gal. Um, I'm an independent. What do I do? Independent. <laughs> I'm an independent. Yeah. Yeah. I need to say that again. Every show, apparently, I need to say I'm an independent because when I when I find someone on Twitter and argue with them to the point that they always get to of either both sides or I don't care who wins. I just want to get rid of incumbent right look everybody he's an independent independent. look and i always get tweets back from people saying i heard that in that voice you use on the podcast (laughs) slowly but surely we're winning blue gal and you know know who who's helping us win who's making this 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 whole enterprise work our listeners our listeners our listeners are so true it is so true to whom we want to wish our you are our santa claus and we want to wish everyone a merry christmas and we want to say it out loud and proud now that it's legal to say merry christmas Trump's letting us say it oh my god thank you donald trump we get to sit down and and uh I, I did want to say one other thing. There was a guy who said uh, something to the effect of, "Why are you, don't be down on this tax bill, fellow MAGAs. After all, it is making liberals mad. That's right. And I said to him, as I say often, uh, so one of these days you're going to be sitting in a nursing home bed in your own shitty adult diaper with no immigrant labor to change it or take care of you in any way. And you're right. I'm still going to be mad about this damn tax bill. That's right. <laughs> but that's okay uh-huh. because your karma outranks my dogma. That's right. And now that <laughs> and, and I'm so glad that Donald Trump has given us all permission to worship Christmas again. Be a Christmas. Worship cause, Christmas. Because yeah. now I get to be an usher at the Christmas service at my church. I, I, they would, I wouldn't have been allowed to. Or just <laughs> one short year ago. No, wait, you've been doing this. Oh, that's all right. I've been along. doing this all along. I'm I'm doing Christianity usually wrong, it's, Blue Gal. Usually it's usually it's at nighttime. This is speaking of weird years, this is gonna be a very strange year. First of all, th- not only is this the shortest night of the year that we're doing this podcast, it is the last night of Zappa Dan. It is. This is Frank Zappa's birthday. And uh so I hope everyone had a very happy Zappa Dan. And, um, yeah, and we ha- we're having a 420 podcast. Oh, I don't think Frank Zappa did drugs. No, he didn't. He, he was... absolutely didn't. He sw- His guitar was his drug. He, he uh, mocks people. <laughs> mocked people for doing drugs, right. So, uh, but Frank Zappa, uh, happy birthday, Frank Zappa. And uh, we, uh, I just want everyone to know, we, we had, I hope everyone had a great Zappa Dan. And uh, next year, you know, we'll see you next year for Zappa Dan on December 4th for what we call bummer knocked the day he died and it goes until the 21st his birthday and just so you know we're, we're back again next week we're not like and those we are lazy, back again next we're week. not like those we're lazy gonna... podcasts that take two <laughs> weeks off and go <laughs> to france two weeks off at christmas and, and go go to yeah. thailand for the we for go the nowhere christmas. people no. we go nowhere no. as we say in our family when we, when we talk about going to the islands we're talking about rock or blue rock island to pick up junior dude that's at, yeah yeah. So we're here. To, we're here next week and the week after, and hopefully many weeks to Forever. come. Forever, we hope. Yeah, we hope we'll be around for a good long time. But you know, what we this do next each... year. Oh, but this next year is weird. I know we're going to do each week, but this next week is weird for the church because uh, Christmas Eve is on a Sunday, huh? so we're they're having morning services and evening services, and we're going to do the morning with the kids and get them dressed like sheep and shepherds and uh, angels and all that good stuff. Not our it's kids. It's a very fun service. Our kids are kids far service. away right now, but yeah. uh, the not kids, our kids. No, but kids show we, up when and... our kids are around are gone. We do the Christmas service and help the little kids dress up for the live nativity thingy that they do. It's really fun. And then uh, it turns out that um, Ash Wednesday is on Valentine's Day. That's going to be romantic oh, to have oh. dirt, have the ashes on your forehead <laughs> and then go out to a romantic dinner. Is that what you're supposed <laughs> to do? <laughs> um Hey, she looks and available. Yeah. She looks available. No, it's not dog poop on her shoes. She's got ashes on her head. Get it right. <laughs> and then Easter is on April Fool's Day, folks. Oh, she man. Hears. Oh, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Go figure. All right. Um, 
Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website at Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Carlton. Carlton is shown next to a Recall Scott Walker sign. (laughs) I would call Scott Walker. Carlton is very pro-union because union wages pay for his food, cat litter, and veterinary care. And he knows that. Go see Carlton at our Facebook page and website. He's beautiful. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. We now interrupt this show for a word from uh, the Don. Yo, how you doing? This is uh, Vinny from the neighborhood. You remember me? I got to tell you something I just did. And I want you to know about it. I just made a big donation to the Professional Left Podcast with Driftglass and Blue Gale. Hey, they make me laugh. Let me tell you something. Driftglass, with all his opinions on David Brooks and stuff, <laughs> I dig his anger. And uh, Blue Gale, what a girl with her little kids and everything. It's fantastic. The problem is, a lot of these right-wing podcasters, you know, they make a whole lot of money. Not these guys. And these guys out there fighting for you every day. So I want to ask you something. What say you uh, go over to their website, proleftpod.com, and, you know, give them some bucks. Because you know you listen to them every week, don't you? Don't you? Don't lie to me. You do. So you got to help them, okay? Don't make me come back here, okay? Yep, and that was an ad from our friends at The Bill Show, which is a podcast out of Australia, expat podcasters who podcast about liberal American politics from down under, and you should go check them out. They're a riot. They're absolutely riot. They're a riot. We love them. And uh, one of the bills sent me this ad, and we ha- he has another one. We'll put it up next week uh, that are just so funny, but we really appreciate that. Thank you. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Uh, we so appreciate your support of our PayPal account, our Patreon account, and our GoFundMe, which is... Is this is going to be the last week for our GoFundMe? We're going to end it on New Year's Day. We are less than a thousand dollars away from reaching our goal of paying off our furnace and air conditioner. And thank you for helping the podcast in that way. It's a little different way of helping out the podcast, but you are making us breathe easier in 2018 by helping us out with that at uh, our GoFundMe. And all of that is at our website. ProLeftPod.com. Now it's time to announce the latest winner of our beautiful bracelet cuff from FoxWise.biz. Again, this is the last week for that, too. Check out our website to see how great they look. The one we're giving away says Resist and has snowflakes on either side along with our URL. If you want to buy something from FoxWise.biz, don't forget to use the coupon code DGBG2017 for 20% off anything, including custom orders, FoxWise.biz. We are running this contest as a way of saying thank you to our donors. And our winner this week is Andreas from Nottingham, England. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Andreas, we will be sending you a cuff bracelet. And also, I'll email you and figure out what you want to do about the donors choose. Your email to us when you donate money indicates that you might be an expat as well. You uh, know an awful lot about the New York Times, so I'm thinking you might be an expat. Um, If you may then have a school in mind, Uh, if you don't, we can work something else out. But uh, the prize is a cuff bracelet that says resist and a $10 gift card to donors choose that can be used to donate to a school in your area or a classroom that is looking for help in an area you support. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Everything is there that you need to know about how to donate to us. It's yes. all there at proleftpod.com. Yes, it's all the information you need. All the information you need. Uh, uh, go get your cancer screenings, folks. I went this week and got my boobs squashed flat. And, uh, you know, you got to do that. 
go and take do take care of yourselves. Uh, I want you to know we're thinking of you. Yeah, health care. Get your health care taken care of. Yep. This is squad care. I'm just telling everybody go have go have yourself checked out and taken care of if you need to. Worth. We have so many people in this world that we hear from. You know, every month we hear from somebody who's dealing with cancer, has a spouse with cancer, has a sibling dealing with something, and uh, our thoughts are with all of those people. Uh, many of you know my sister is dealing with it, and it's not going uh, well right now. So. Uh, keep her in your thoughts. We're we're all in this together. Um, as I said before, I had had to drop all of my Christmas knitting to knit prayer shawls for some patients who are uh, in critical at critical points in their in their experience. Who so it? who need that? Who need it right now? Yeah. So uh, just just take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And know that we are thinking of you. And if you've let me know in the past, uh, you know, year that that you're dealing with something serious, uh, know that you were in my thoughts over Christmas and all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. We so appreciate it. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Cal, the Internet Kitties are so happy that it's both Christmas and episode 420 because they can finally say, blaze it, Santa. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, lovey, dovey. Let's forget about the whining, the crying, the shooting and the dying and the flower and the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017, Drift Class, Blue Gal Podcast.